Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Tolerance by Dragon Non Games. This is a trick-taking asymmetrical game based around England from the time of the Tudors to the time of the Reformation. Each player is going to be playing as their own specific character with their own goals, or you could simply go ahead and play the balanced character for each and every player. Uh, they're going to be receiving a certain player mats and a scoreboard, and there are three Three rounds in the game, and during each round is going to involve one of the king or queen of England's rule, whether it be Queen Mary or the or Elizabeth or King James. And during each of these time periods, it will change how scoring works in the game. So your objective is to not only win the trick, but make sure that the trick is beneficial for you because each card has unique action types, has value on them, and you're going to try and gain these values uh, in the form of points as you go along by scoring even multipliers throughout the game. At the end of the third round, if you have the most points based on the uh, points you gain from the end of each of the rounds and also the points from the continuous points trade section, you will be the winner of tolerance. Well, let's go ahead and show you how to set the game up. Now, because this is a three to five player game, you're going to need at least three players, and each player is going to be getting one of these characters. For your first game, it's highly suggested that you start with Buttram the Balanced, and you place it face up next to each player that is playing. This is going to tell you how scoring works during each of the three rounds slash reigns of Mary the First, Elizabeth the First, and James the First. And then, of course, each player is going to be getting a player board, which is going to include the suit order, uh, the end of the round, how that works, and of course the deceased piles for your characters that you're going to be gaining, or your tricks, and for your alive areas, which are going to involve your Protestants, your Catholics, and your neutrals, and place that face up in front of you. On the opposite end is the card anatomy. It's the summary of what the card is, what they do, and how you can utilize them. And then finally, this. You're going to be needing this throughout the game, so make sure that you have a pencil ready or a pen, because you're going to have piety values, gold values, and in which ways you score throughout each of the three rounds, and finally the bottom, how many points you get total after the end of the game. Make sure you set up the deck by shuffling it up and setting aside the three different rulers. In the first round of the game, you will take Queen Mary and you will shuffle that card into the deck here. And that is going to be basically, she's going to be the ruler of the of the game, so only her, only she's going to exist. The other two will not yet exist until the next round and then the last round. Then you'll have the loan cards here. You go ahead and set these aside. These are just cards you'll have to gain if you ever go too low on gold. And any other extra sheets of paper or characters or player boards you will not need unless you're playing with a higher player count. Go ahead and make sure that you have the rulebook handy, set that next to you in some way because you will be using it throughout the game, and get ready to begin. At the start of the game, go ahead and deal 12 cards from the deck to each player. This is your hand for that round. When the next round comes up, you're going to be dealt a new set of 12 cards and remove the current ruler and add the new ruler. The person who has been to the soonest religious event is going to be the player who starts the game off. And this is a trick-taking game. Uh, in a trick-taking game, there are going to be suits, and there's a bunch of different suits in trick-taking games. And in this one, there is going to be five. You're going to have the nobles, you're going to have the clergy, the townsfolk, the peasants, and then you're going to have the wild. When you select, you can select any suit that you'd like. And when you play a suit, like if I were to play the noble suit, each player is going to also have to play that suit. Now they have two options. They can either A, well three I should say, they can either A, play the same suit, B, they can play a wild suit, or if they do not have the same suit, they can choose to play the wild suit, or they can play any suit they want. If they play the same suit, they have an opportunity to win. If they play a wild, they have an opportunity to win. But if they play any other suit, they are not going to win no matter how high the number is. So in this case here, we'll just say that the second player chose a 13, in which case the next player is going to get a chance to go. And let's just say that this player did not have any blues, but also didn't have a wild that was high enough to get 13. They could simply play this seven peasant. Then what happens after everybody plays their cards, you'll check to see who won the trick. And in this case, it's going to be whoever has the highest valued uh, of, the, of the suit, of the like the Trump suit, which is gonna be nobles in this case, the highest number value, and it could be also wilds. And when you play a wild, you can also choose what type of suit you'd like it to be. So a seven blue, 13 blue, and a seven peasant. The 13 is going to win. 
Well, not only does the player win, but he's actually going to enact all the abilities on all the cards, and you're going to check the bottom left hand side of each card and see what it does. Some cards will change certain characters from Protestants to Catholic, or vice versa. Others will kill Protestants, or kill Catholics, or kill neutral characters. Some will gather gold or piety from certain characters. Just go ahead and refer to the rulebook uh, on the very back pages if you need to understand what these characters do. Once you have enacted from the highest valued card to the lowest valued card, always going from the suit and down if there's a tie, then you're going to place the characters where they are respectively supposed to go. So for instance, if you had to kill a uh, Catholic and there was a Catholic on the field, that Catholic would go into the deceased Catholic area on your player board. If there's no Catholic, nothing will happen. You'll just resolve them. In the first round of the game uh, for uh, Queen Mary, Catholics are going to also be neutrals. In the last round of the game for King James, uh, Protestants are going to also be neutrals. It's only during the second round of the game, Elizabeth, where neutrals are just neutrals and placed in their specific location. So when you make sure to check, it's on the top uh, right hand side of the card, that is going to symbolize if it's a circle, which is a neutral, which depending on the era will range as to whether it's a Protestant or a Catholic or actually a neutral, or it's gonna have a cross, which is going to be your Protestants, and then it's going to have like a cross with multiple lines on it for Catholics. Um, so you're gonna go ahead and place these guys down. And in this case, this is the first round, which means that all of the Catholics are neutral. So this player would win, that player would get those there. And whenever a player wins a trick, that player is going to be the person who starts the next trick. So they're gonna take a look into their hand, and then they're going to choose a character and place it out. It doesn't matter what card they wanna play, they can play any card they want. They can also play a wild, as long as they designate what type of card it is. It could be, oh, I'm playing this wild as a peasant, this wild as a noble. I could play, for instance, this courier. This courier is going to be a peasant, in which case everybody else is going to have to play peasant cards or wilds. And if they don't have a peasant card, maybe they'll want to play something not so good, like a three noble. And then of course the next player will go ahead and do the same, playing something if they don't think they can beat that 12, which in this case they can't, but they have to play a peasant because they have one, they place that down. Like I said, if you have a card uh, that is uh, part of the suit that you're supposed, that you have to play, like if, I, if, I'm, if we're playing peasants, you have to play it. The only way you cannot play a peasant is if you choose to play a wild, or if you don't have a peasant, you can play any card, but you're guaranteed to lose, okay? And that's basically it. You just go throughout the rounds, we'll check to see who wins, look and see what happens on the bottom left, and then you're going to add up any points. Now on your character sheet here, or your player sheet here, the round sheet, these are your values. You're gonna have a Catholic piety value, which you'll gain whenever you play cards that say you gain them, and it's gonna tell you on the bottom, le bottom left what they do, or where you, how you do it. Uh, your piety value for your Protestants, your gold value, and every time you get at least 10, uh, 20, or 30, you're gonna be marking down them on the sheet. These are kind of like uh, multipliers, so to speak, for your characters. And this is how many points you're gonna get at the end of the game. So max you can get in a base game is 66 for gold, for having 60, 60, piety, etc., etc. And then over here, at the end of every round, you're gonna score based on the round. Well, in the base game, it'll tell you, okay, you're going to get for suits one point for every peasant that you have. Uh, you're also going to get uh, one point for having at least one card with this specific symbol. Now, one point for having the most of that specific symbol. Nothing if you ever have any, you don't, you don't gain or lose anything for having your dead Catholics. You'll get points for having dead <laughs> Protestants and then it'll go to the next round. And each of the queens or kings will favor different things happening. They'll want certain religious people dead. All the characters in the game will have conversions, but yeah, you'll, go, you'll go through that and you're just gonna mark down here what you score and what your total points are. And after the third round, you'll check to see all your values here, down here. Check to see if you have any multipliers on your character board, all your points here, and then you'll check to see your total final score at the end of that third round. Don't forget, remember, at each round, the beginning of each round, take out the queen or the king that you're playing with and add the new one in order. And that's pretty much the game tolerance. 
Oh, it's a trick-taking game. Let's talk about what I think about it. So Tolerance reminds me a lot of Tournament at Camelot. That's the Arthurian legend trick-taking style game where each player has health points and you're trying to diminish them by making them take cards that deal damage to them. So you're not necessarily wanting to win tricks in this case, you're wanting to lose them. But for Tolerance, you want to win but only in certain ways and only at certain times. Sometimes you might want nobles to survive because King James really fancies his nobles. So in the third round, trying to get as many nobles is important. Whereas in the first round, it's not so needed. And in fact, Mary's gonna want you to have peasants on your board. Uh, at different, different portions of the game, you're going to want certain types of religions dead. Mary loves to see a dead Protestant and James uh, loves to see a dead Catholic. And it, it, it just shifts and changes how how the game is played, how the tricks are going to kind of want to be functioned when you play down your cards, uh, when and how you want to change certain characters' alignments, because each character has their own like religion, each character has their own actions or benefits in some way. Some characters are completely negative, like for instance the satyr. The satyr's got no piety, no money, and is able to kill a card um, that is the highest number on the field. And so at the end of checking everybody, whatever is left that's the highest, he's going to kill. And so you might want to play that on a trick that you know you can't win, you know that has a great value, and you just don't have the cards you need. So some of these cards are there to function to hurt the other players. Or some of them are guaranteeing you to win, unless players do some nasty things. So there are character cards that are just flat out better than other cards. But because of the way the interactions work in this game, you're not guaranteed to win anything, even when you have the best set of cards. Each of the cards are also unique in the fact that they have different functions, they have different names, they have different artwork. It's really, really cool how this game kind of feels and works with the theme. Going through the different eras feels different as well. You know that during certain eras you want to do certain things for the queen or the king of that time period. Uh, Elizabeth being the more neutral stance, one doesn't want anybody dead, doesn't care about... Um, any of the nobles or the peasants, but cares about the workers. And so you can kind of feel the theme going through a basic trick-taking game. <laughs> Taking out loans is pretty simple. If you go to zero, you'll take out this loan. And each round, you can only have up to uh, one of these. So you can't get more than one each round, basically. And you'll be able to pay these guys off, but they count as negative victory points if you don't get rid of them. And three points is quite a bit in this game. So you have kind of leverage because you can lose points in this game. You can lose piety, you can lose gold. The only thing you can't lose is your multiples. Scoring in this game is kind of complicated, just like the trick-taking aspect is kind of complicated. You have to understand that like when you hit 10, you cross out the multiplier, and you can go back and forth and fluctuate, and if you hit, once you hit 20, you can cross out that multiplier, and that's how you score points in the game for the continuous tr trait tallies. Uh, then you have each end of round effect, which is the most important part of the game. That's where it really matters, is what you kill, what you keep alive, what characters are present on your board and where they're present on your board, and you score points for those things. And at the end of the game, you check all your multipliers and you score yourself up. Now, the very base game, the multipliers are quite simple. You're going to score one point for each of your pieties for Catholic and one point for each of your Protestants, one point for each gold, and then you'll add all these guys up. But when you want to get crazy, that's when you start playing with the back, where you can get negative multipliers for having, for, let's say, Catholic characters um, uh, alive. You can get double positive points for having the Protestants alive, and you can get multipliers on money by times two or even times three. And so now you're functioning different than the other players and maybe different than what the king or queen would want. So you have to try and use the time period in which you shine the most to score as many points as possible and win those specific tricks that are gonna be beneficial for you. This has a ton of theme, beautiful artwork and style. Uh, I, I really loved how it felt playing through each of the different ages of the game. Uh, the king or queen is gonna have their own unique ability too, where once you get this guy and you play it, uh, if you have this on your board, what will happen is at the end of the age or the end of the round, you can use her ability or his ability, which is to kill one card from anybody, anywhere. You can use it to help yourself. Maybe you want to get rid of a pesky Catholic on your board or Protestant or one on the other players' boards. You can do that as well. So they have kind of a unique, powerful ruler ability. And of course, the king or queens are always going to be the highest value and they're always wild, which just makes them really, really good. Um, so yeah, I, this is a really cool, solid game. But let me talk about some negatives. Uh, the first negative I want to say about this game is it, it's it, you have to you're gonna have to go through and look at the characters and understand the there's a, there's a quite a bit going on right you have your suit you have your number 
You have your type, which is what type of religion they are, how much piety they have, how much gold they have, and then each of the abilities, which are all pretty much different. Some characters don't have them. The problem with that is uh, there are a bunch of cards in here that we just couldn't really figure out how they worked uh, based on what they, how it read. Like some of them seem pretty simple, like you get all the piety for the uh, Protestants here, right? And this one here is you gain all the gold for all your peasants and all your clergy here. Uh, but some cards had arrows and some card had squares and I just didn't know how those functioned. So what I had to do is I started going through the booklet here on the back and just reading them and playing them as, as stated here and that helped out a lot. Um, I know this Kickstarter was funded and I believe it's, it's being push, uh, pumped out now. Uh, we'll see how it changed. Maybe I just didn't understand or me and Callie couldn't figure it out. Um, and maybe it's a simple thing we, that we missed. But as far as the, the little text boxes on the left hand side, it just the graphic design just didn't make sense to me. The, 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 the written portion of it didn't, it didn't flow. Like why is there a box here? Why is there an arrow here? And so it just added a lot of confusion. But once we actually just went to the back of the book and just played it like that, we're like, okay, this is what that character does. It was, it was not a big deal. But hopefully that gets changed. So that I just know what they do when I see them. Or there's something on the back of, 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 of maybe one of these guys here that just explains them a, a little better. But oh, other than that, the game's really, really good. If you like a thematic game that's based on the Tudors, it's based on the Reformation, uh, that has the different kings and queens and kind of how they felt about their rules in a light way, but a story way that you can feel while you play a cool trick building game, a trick -building games. And it it's also has that unique uh, aspect of rounds that function and change and it's it's a deeper game than most trick-taking games it's not just like hearts it's probably even a little bit more deeper than tournament at camelot which i think was an amazing game i still like that one a little bit better than this one but this one does something vastly different and it functions different and you feel the story a lot more in this game if you want to pick up the game Tolerance, there's a link down below in the description. I suggest you check it out because I have only played one other trick-taking game that has more theme and creativity, and this one has a ton of it. So there's definitely room for both of them in your collection if you don't got them. But yes, Tolerance is a solid game. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Tolerance. If you like this game and you're interested in taking a look at it, there's a link down below in the description. You can also check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also check out our live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST and 6.30 p.m. PST on Whatnot on Wednesday. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to uh, working with the three different monarchs of the time, uh, with or without you, depending on what we're doing, <laughs> next time.